Good morning, and welcome to our newest edition of United We Learn. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Kelker, president of Your United Way. For those who know us well, you're familiar with our four issue areas of basic needs, education, financial stability, and health. Today, it's my pleasure to begin a deeper dive into one of those issue areas, basic needs. You'll hear about the programs we fund and how our United Way helps the community come together to support the most at risk in our community. As we start, we have placed everyone on mute. During our program, please ask questions using the chat option. We will wrap up in 15 minutes and United Way staff will stay on to address any questions. If you're watching the recorded version and have a question, please send them to feedback at uwcil.org. This morning, I'm joined by Katrina Hayes, our Director of Community Impact, Mitch Baker, Community Impact Manager, and Josh Sabo with the Heartland Continuum of Care, who will guide us through the work United Way is doing to support a safety net of food and shelter for our community's most vulnerable members. To get things started, I'll turn things over to Mitch. Thanks, John. Now, as John was saying, our basic needs efforts are about supporting a safety net of food and shelter for our community's most vulnerable members. Across the state, there are almost 11,000 people homeless on any given night, and about 270 of those are right here in Springfield and Sangamon County. We're also not immune to hunger here in Illinois where one in 10 people struggle with hunger, and it's even more common for kids, with one in eight children facing that struggle. Now, to address these needs, last year we provided over 400,000 meals, over 167,000 pounds of food to those in need. We also provided over 31,000 nights of shelter to about 1,400 clients. Now, let's step back and get some context on this work and how it fits into what United Way does. So in every other issue area, we track long-term outcomes and help guide individuals by providing supports in education, financial stability, and health. But when you're hungry, you need a meal right now. When you're out in the elements, you need shelter tonight. So even with the best programs to ensure long-term success, some crises are still going to exist. And that's where our basic needs programs come in. Now, John has a phrase he likes to use for our basic needs work, hots and cots. Now, this is really the bread and butter of our basic needs programming. So if you're hungry, our programs feed you. If you're cold, our programs warm you. These basic necessities are often the reason a person connects with one of our programs for the first time. But once a client walks through the door to receive services, they're often connected with our other programs that can really put wind behind that person's sales towards the future. And Katrina is gonna talk a little bit about what those programs actually look like. Thanks, Mitch. Let's do a dive into the basic needs programs that United Way supports. For food, we fund two main programs, Catholic Charities, St. John's Breadline, and Daily Bread Home Delivered Meals through Senior Services of Central Illinois. The Breadline is a straightforward place to get a hot meal, no questions asked. In COVID, they can't have clients dine in, so they developed takeout meals that can be safely eaten while social distancing. For Daily Bread, however, Takeout meals are their specialty. They deliver meals directly to the front doors of seniors throughout our communities. Senior isolation was already an issue before COVID, but with COVID restricting our seniors' movement more than ever, this program is even more critical, both for ensuring seniors are fed and providing some much needed social interaction. For our shelter strategy, we fund a few different kinds of programs. We fund two emergency shelters, Helping Hands for Men, and Contact Ministries for Women and Women with Children. However, emergency shelter is not limited to the stereotypical definition of homelessness. Emergency shelter to address safety is critical to supporting the most vulnerable in our community. Because of this, we also fund Sojourn, a shelter for victims of domestic violence, as well as Minnie O'Burn Crisis Nursery, where parents in crisis can receive free childcare 24-7, 365. Alone, these programs do incredible work, but when they are com connected to one another, they create an amazing infrastructure for the most vulnerable in our community. And United Way seeks out ways to strengthen this connectivity. For example, 
United Way supports our local HMIS system, that's Homeless Management Information System, housed at Mercy Communities, that coordinates most of the homeless and prevention services in our community. From a relatively small United Way investment and a partnership with the City of Springfield, this data sharing and linkage system enables local agencies to access more than a half a million dollars from HUD, which creates a major return on investment for our community. In addition to HMIS, we are also the administrator of our local emergency food and shelter program, which provides federal dollars to local agencies who help with things like meals, shelter, rent, and utility assistance. In the last year alone, we were able to ensure that more than $187,000 was invested in our community. Supporting basic needs means taking on several different roles and all are important, from direct funding, to supporting infrastructure, to managing government grants. We do it. However, it can't stop there. We also make sure our programs are utilizing best practices, like trauma-informed care, which I will turn it back over to Mitch to explain. Thanks, Katrina. So trauma-informed care can sound complicated, but really it's just a way to acknowledge that each client that comes to a program is human, and as many humans do, can come with a history of trauma. Uh, if you've ever heard of if you've ever heard us talk about ACEs, that's adverse childhood experiences around our education work, um, you know that these childhood adversities have been found to be much more pre prevalent in the homeless population and that these ACEs are statistically tied to poor outcomes. Now, trauma informed care acknowledges that trauma. And while this isn't about turning every staff member or volunteer into a therapist for their clients, it does help shift staff from asking, what is wrong with this person to what has happened to this person? Now, why are we talking about this? So starting this funding cycle, United Way is working with our partners to ensure staff and volunteers are trained on trauma-informed practices. This creates an environment where, where clients are treated with dignity and aren't triggered or even re-traumatized by their experiences with these programs. However, as we've discussed a few times in our prior United We Learns, we are more than just a funder. We are a convener, collaborator, and supporter of community initiatives. One of those collaborations and partnerships we're a part of is the Heartland Continuum of Care. And to tell you more about that group and why you should be paying close attention to them is Josh Sabo, the recently hired Heartland Continuum of Care coordinator. Thanks, Mitch. And while I'm still new in the position, I've come to know that United Way is behind and supportive of a lot of work that brings people together in our community. They partner with groups that are bringing people together. And at the same time, they're happy to lend a hand in bringing people together as well. Their involvement and support of other partners in the community is one of the reasons my position was able to be created and then funded by the Community Foundation for the Land of Lincoln and the City of Springfield. My role in the community is to help support and elevate the work of the Heartland Continuum of Care. And you may be asking what that is. The Heartland Continuum of Care serves as our community's primary HUD designated body with the mission of developing, coordinating, and implementing long-range plans meeting the needs of people experiencing homelessness within the heartland of our beloved Springfield, Illinois community. Continuums of care are mandated to be in place throughout the country by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD as we uh, more commonly refer to it as. However, the way that continuums work and operate it is not mandated, and that allows communities to align themselves in ways that best meet their local needs, kind of, the, kind of like how United Ways across the country work. Our community's continuum of care is a membership-based organization with a board of directors. United Way staff are among the 138 members that come to the table to discuss and implement a crisis response system, which is the strategy our community adopted in 2018 to address homelessness. The system involves prevention and diversion, outreach, coordinated entry, emergency shelter, and permanent housing. And that's a lot of technical language to say that we work collectively to identify who's experiencing homelessness. We work with them to determine why they're experiencing homelessness. And then we address those causes. And ultimately we do that with the goal of helping people find permanent housing. Because ending homelessness means we need to help house individuals. However, the number of individuals experiencing homelessness is not a fixed number. This is constantly evolving and changing as new people come into our community and as people experience housing instability. However, putting a best practice model in place is only one step 
And ultimately, as any good company or project would, we have to continually assess, strategize, implement, and evaluate how our system to address homelessness is working. For Singamon County, we're now in the assess phase again, which is why many partners have come together to develop a long-term strategic plan regarding homelessness, which we hope to see begin by 2021. In the midst of this pandemic, we know that an increasing number of our neighbors are experiencing hardships of many kinds. A common phrase among those advocating for care for those experiencing homelessness is that housing is health care. The last six months have proven how true that statement is, and I have been amazed by the work our agencies are putting in to address homelessness and to help people. We know that there's more work to do, but I'm grateful for all those who are investing their energy in doing everything they can to help make sure that everyone in our community has access to housing. If any of you have questions regarding the work of the Heartland Continuum of Care or its providers, please feel free to reach out to me and visit the Heartland Continuum of Care website at heartlandcontinuum.com or follow us on Facebook. And with that, I just want to say that I appreciate being asked to join United Way this morning uh, for today's United We Learn. And now I'll turn it back over to John. Thank you, Josh. It's been a joy having you join us today as well. Thank you, Katrina and Mitch. And thank you to each of you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed learning what goes into our United Way's work to ensure a safety net of food and shelter for the most vulnerable in our community and how the community is collaborating to do the same. If you or anyone you know is in need of services, please call 211 to be connected with a trained specialist who can help you get the information you need to access those services. This concludes today's program, and we will keep the session open for a few minutes to address any questions, if there are any, in chat. Any questions we do not get to in the next few minutes will be addressed and saved on our website. Again, thank you. Have a great Friday and a wonderful weekend.